Hello to all fans of physics and physical experiments. This is Alexei Kolchin, and today we're going to talk about what electric voltage is. Voltage is related to such associated concepts as electromotive force, potential, and potential difference. And all these terms need to be used appropriately and correctly. And we'll start with a simple experiment. We've assembled a circuit consisting of a battery, a light bulb and an ammeter which will measure the current. Let's close the circuit. The light bulb lights up and the ammeter shows a current of 6 tenths of an ampere. This means that every second a charge equal to 6 tenths of a coulomb flows through the circuit. If we assume that positive charges are flowing through the circuit, then they move. From the positive terminal of the battery, through the ammeter and the light bulb, to the negative terminal of the battery. Then they pass through the inside of the battery and continue moving around this loop. And the direction of the current in the circuit coincides with the direction of movement of the positive charges. But in reality, we know that it is negatively charged electrons that move through the circuit. And they travel in the opposite direction, passing through the light bulb and the ammeter, returning to the battery. However, the direction of the current in the circuit remains the same. The light bulb is lit, which means it is consuming electrical energy. And the source of energy in this circuit is obviously the battery. This means that each charge, as it passes through the battery, gains some energy and then gives this energy to the light bulb. And this process repeats over and over again. It is also clear that the energy released in the light bulb is proportional to the amount of charge that has passed through it. And the voltage drop across the light bulb is defined as the amount of energy given to the bulb by each unit of charge that passes through it. Now all that's left is to write in formula form what I've just explained. First of all, the voltage drop across the light bulb equals the ratio of the energy released in it to the electric charge that has passed through the bulb. And this formula can also be rewritten in another convenient form. The energy released in the light bulb is equal to the product of the charge and the voltage. And if we take the energy released in the light bulb per unit of time, that will be the power. And in this case, the charge that passes through in the same unit of time is equal to the current. And we get another formula. Voltage is equal to the ratio of power to current in the circuit. Accordingly, the power released in the light bulb is equal to the product of the current and the voltage drop across the bulb. Here, the ammeter is connected in series with the light bulb and the voltmeter is connected in parallel. We close the circuit, do, and a current of 0.6 amperes flows through it, while the voltmeter shows 3.4 volts. This is the voltage drop across the light bulb. And if we multiply 0.6 amperes by Ko, 3.4 volts, we get the power dissipated in the light bulb, which is about 2 watts. Now I have disconnected the circuit and I'm connecting the voltmeter directly to the battery. And it shows not 3.4 volts, but 4.4 volts, a whole volt more. So the question is, where did this extra volt come from? Or rather, where did it disappear to? In the circuit when the light bulb was connected. The point is that when I connected the voltmeter directly to the battery, no current flowed through the circuit at all because the voltmeter's resistance is very high and it's designed that way on purpose. In this case, the voltmeter was showing us the electromotive force of the battery. That is the amount of energy it can in principle provide to one coulomb of electric charge. And we know that this energy in our situation is equal to 4.4 joules. But when we add a light bulb to the circuit, the charge that receives this energy from the battery gives 3. 0.4 joules to the bulb. And another one, joule is lost inside the battery itself. And that's why we can say that the battery has two internal resistance. And it should be emphasized that we cannot get rid of the battery's internal resistance in any way. 
It's kind of built into it, into its very design. Now I've put together a more complex circuit. Here a lamp is connected and in series with it is a block of two lamps connected in parallel. The voltage across the first lamp is measured by this voltmeter. Uh, the voltage across these two lamps is measured by this voltmeter. And the third voltmeter measures the voltage across this entire section of the circuit. I turn on the power source and we see that the voltage drop across the first lamp is just under 2 volts across the two parallel connected lamps. It's just over 4 volts and the total voltage drop across this section of the circuit is exactly 6 volts. That is, the total is exactly the sum of the voltage drops across each individual section. Now let's consider a circuit that consists of three resistors connected in series. And let's say this circuit is supplied with a voltage of 15 volts from a power source. So the voltage drop across the first resistor is 3 volts, across the second it's 7 volts and across the third it's 5 volts totaling 15 volts from the power source. And now let's talk about the concept of potential and potential difference. Potential energy can be measured from any reference level. Any level can be chosen as zero. And you can choose any point in this circuit as the zero energy level. For example, you can set uh, this point as zero. And then we say that its potential is zero. Then the potential at this point is three volts higher. That is plus three volts. At this point, plus 10 volts. And at this point, plus 15 volts. But of course, we could have chosen, for example, this point as the zero potential. In that case, the potential at this point would be minus 3 volts, at this 1 plus 7 volts, and at this 1 plus 12 volts. And usually, the potential of the negative terminal of the source is taken as de, the zero potential. Now, it makes sense to talk about the units of voltage measurement. By definition, 1 volt is 1 Joule per 1 Coulomb. And this means that if we apply a voltage of 1 volt to a resistor, then as 1 Coulomb of electric charge passes through this resistor, 1 Joule of energy is released, which is converted into heat. But electrical engineers deal not with charges, but with currents. And that's why, for them, a more natural definition of 1 volt is 1 Watt per 1 Ampere. And this means that if we apply a voltage of 1 volt to a resistor and a current of 1 ampere flows through it, then the power dissipated on it is 1 watt. And this unit is named after Alessandro Volta, one of the founders of the science of electricity. And now I want to show you several different school power supplies that we use in our work. This battery, as you already know, provides a voltage of 4.5 volts. This power supply delivers a voltage of up to 30 volts and a current of up to 5 ohm amperes. And this high voltage power supply provides a voltage of up to 30 kilovolts. I turn it on and to our delight, a spark discharge lights up between the electrodes. Well, this power supply is, in a way, the most interesting of them all. It provides a voltage of only up to 3 volts less than the battery, but the current can reach up to 100 amperes. And I want to ask you, what do you think such a power supply could be used for? Share your thoughts on this in the comments to this video on YouTube.